You guys ready to tackle a brand new problem? If you want to code along, make sure to hit the link in the description below. It's time to pop our daily dose of code. Welcome back. This next video is just an excuse to explain a concept called recursive function calls. It's easy to explain with the help of this problem right here. If you're already familiar with the concept, that's well and good. Just hit the problem and try to solve it by yourselves. It's a pretty direct application of the concept. If you're not, or if you want to brush up on recursive function calls, just follow along. We'll explain it in this video. And on a little side note, we've got a Hacker Earth developer survey, which is out right now. You can take it and this is your chance to give back to the community a little bit. It doesn't take very long. It takes a little more than 10 minutes to fill. If you are so inclined, just head to the description down below and click the link. Now guys, with all that out of the way, let's just head straight into the problem. Letter combinations of a phone number. You're given a string str containing only digits from two to nine, including two and nine. You are also given the following mapping of digits such as they are on a telephone. Return all possible letter combinations that the number could represent. The resultant array must be in increasing order or in ascending order. As we can see, 1 and 0 aren't mapped to anything, which is why the string only consists of 2 to 9. You can see our sample input and output right here. Now, if you want to solve it, just pause it here. Go down to our link in the description, our hacker out link, and you can solve it there. In case you want to know more about function calls, stick around. So this right here is how we got our result. Each number is mapped to a set of characters. It could be three or four characters. So let's say our input was only five, a single digit number. The result could be J, K or L. Five could represent one of three characters. If our input was say nine, our result could be W, X, Y or Z. Now, if our input is a two digit number, like it is in this case, six, eight, six can represent M, N and O and eight can represent T, U and V. So naturally all the possible combinations are M T M U M V N T N U N V and O T O U and O V. Those are all the nine possibilities. All right, guys, we're going to use this function right here in order to explain recursive function calls. Now, a few things to note about this function. The first thing is there's an exit clause right at the beginning. All right. So why do we need an exit condition? Now let's say someone approached you and said, boss, you give me 10,000 a month for the next 10 months and I'll give it back to you with a hundred percent interest. Now a lot of us might actually take that deal. Suppose a really shady guy came to you and he said, boss, give me 10,000 a month. And he just ended the statement there. Who would agree? All that means is we'd keep giving money. We'd keep giving 10,000 to him without stopping. It would go on infinite times. The same thing happens here. That's why exit clauses are very important. In case we don't have an exit clause, the function is going to keep on executing again and again and again until we run out of memory. So unless we have an exit condition, our recursive calls will never stop. I'll also take this time to explain the parameters really quick. str is the input string, 6, 8 in this case. Num mapping translates one number into its corresponding alphabets. For instance, 6 gets translated into MNO, 8 gets translated into TUV. RES is an array that's going to hold our result. Current character and result string, we'll get into them shortly. Initially, their values are going to be zero for current character and result string is just going to be empty. This little water bottle right here, that denotes our function. Now we know code in general executes from the first line to the last line. So let's imagine the bottom of the water bottle is the first line and the top is the last line. Now the water of execution is going to run from the first line to the last line, that is to say from bottom to top, the moment it encounters the for loop or the moment it encounters a function call, we can see another very similar function gets created and execution starts from there. However, there have to be a few different things in the subsequent functions. The reason being, if we just call the same function over and over again without changing any parameters, there'd be no point in the code and it'd probably never end either. So in the first function call, the very beginning, the first bottle, current string is going to map six to the string MNO and is going to iterate through each of those characters. 
So first it's going to iterate through m and for that m it's going to call this exact same function gen strings again. The only difference being result string is now m and the current character is no longer 0 it's 1. We're no longer looking at 6 we're now looking at 8. In this function call since our current character value has been changed 8 will now be mapped to tuv and for each of those tuv characters another function call is going to be made. Here we can see the moment t gets hit the result string is going to become empty and a third function call is going to happen. At this point it's going to hit the very first if condition or exit condition. If the length of the result string is equal to the length of str which is true 6 8 has two characters empty has two characters we're going to put empty into our result and we're going to terminate the function. So as you might have guessed, there are two ways to terminate a function call. Way 1 is to hit the return statement and way 2 is to complete execution of every single line in the function. In this case, the return will be hit and empty will get added to our result. Now the same thing happens for u and v as well. That's because the i loop iterates through every single character t, u and v, meaning mu and mv both get added to result. It's at this point that the execution of every single line inside the second function call is done. We can now exit from this particular function call. But guys, we're not done yet. The reason being, we've only finished m in our very first function call. Remember, the string it had to iterate through was m, n and o. We've only completed m right now, so we've got to repeat this exact same process for n and o as well. I'll play it a little faster. Ooh, that was really fast. So nt got added to our string, so did nu, and so will nv. Now that n is done, this that function call is done, and we repeat the exact same process for o, meaning ot, ou as we will see really shortly, and ov as well will get added into our result string. And you'll notice this result string is already in ascending order. Now that's the beauty of well-formed recursive function calls is that oftentimes you're not going to have to sort it. You'll already get a sorted array. Now let's see if this works right here. Sample test case have been passed. Submit. As we can see, our result has been accepted. So guys, that's how you solve the problem, letter combinations of a phone number. If you like my solution, make sure to hit the golden trio, you know, like subscribe bell icon. And if you have another way to solve it, I'd love to know without not involving recursive function calls, then make sure to leave your comments down below or any queries or any doubts. Make sure to just leave your comments down below. It's been Vivek Valur guys. I'll see you all next time.